So what, yeah, I, so I saw, cause you CC'd us on those. So um, they just, the two just didn't, they didn't show, they were not interested or don't have the time or they just didn't respond to it all. So, okay. So for, I reached out to Mary Lammy and um, Diane Simmons from the Real Coalition. I didn't hear anything back from either of them at all. I had also reached out to um, a professor at Brandeis who lives in Needham, um, who I had heard speak once at uh, Facing History, Facing Ourselves. Yeah. He, he did not respond. Um, and then I reached out to um, a professor at Northeastern that I used to work with, and I have not heard back from him either. Uh, lastly, I reached out to, um, hey bud. Hey bud. Um, Stephanie Hartung, um, who is also a professor at Northeastern and um, a Needham resident. And she's the one who did get back to me, suggesting uh, the person who is at the, um, the ACLU. She sent me a link to some, a, a talk that she heard him give and said that he was um, very good. I wasn't sure whether, I'm sure he's awesome. I don't know if we have the, um, if we put on a speaker from the ACLU, if, if that's asking for trouble or, or not, if, if that will shape who, who thinks that they want to come to an event. But um, so I don't know, right now I'm like over <laughs> or not, not getting very far. I reached out to uh, a, a couple uh, women who have head up, headed up the racial justice initiative at our temple in Wellesley. And uh, they are trying to come up with some names for me. I've also reached out to Colette Phillips uh, from Get Connected, uh, who is very well connected uh, in uh, the Boston area and invest. I, I spoke to one of her assistants a couple of days ago and uh, uh, she's really busy. So uh, if I don't hear from her by tomorrow, I'll give her a buzz back and see if she can give me some suggestions too. So are you guys thinking that this should be, it's, I think some of the similar, some similar questions or concerns will probably be raised that we're facing right now, Jen, with the policing um, forum mm -hmm. series. Do you think we should um, approach this from, you know, one speaker to an audience? Do you think there should be Q and A involved? Should we explore the idea of doing small group? you know, sort of breakout sessions. Like, what do you guys think would be the best form for this? Um, I think given we're trying to pull in people who aren't necessarily, wouldn't necessarily attend something that, you know, HRC would put on or NDI would put on or, you know, trying to reach out to a broader audience. Well, there's so, there's so much mis, misinformation out there. I think it's, number one, it should be educational. Uh, but number two is if we advertise it too much as far as breakout groups, and some people are intimidated by that and uh, are uncomfortable speaking in, uh, you know, even on Zoom in breakout groups. So uh, I think we have to, you know, give some intention, attention to, uh, you know, we don't want to push people away, but we want to encourage people. But we also want to have some discussion and some Q&A where people have questions. I think it's going to depend upon who the presenter is. I mean, we, we do have a history, you know, a couple of years ago of, of doing, I would say, programs that were 90% educational, 10% Q&A. And so I think that that is a value Add. I don't think everything has to be like an invitation to conversation to kind of avoid getting us into the quagmire that is that, that whole other discussion. Yeah. Um, and I think like to, to Bud's point, there is so much confusion about, about um, critical race theory is, is that having just a flat out educational dis, um, presentation about it, I think could be I, I think it would be appropriate and, and useful. Like I don't, I don't even think we have to come out it doesn't have to sound like we're coming out at, at, with um, advocacy on behalf of or against, but just like, this is what it is. So that, you know, I had a conversation with my dad about a month ago. He was all flustered up about it. And he's like, what the heck even is this? And then when I explained it to him, he was like, oh, all right. You know, so I feel like, you know, for the John Howards out there in the world who are just like, not sure why they're so bothered but would understand, you know, when, if you can really explain to them what it is and what it's not, or like, oh, okay, 
you know, like that to me is like, that's what made me think this is a worthwhile conversation to have or program to put on to maybe challenge, challenge people's ideas of what they think it is with, with some facts <laughs> about what it actually is. And maybe, yeah, sorry, ahead. I was just going to say, maybe trying to bring the schools into it makes it too more, too complicated because maybe then it opens up the door to should we or shouldn't we in the schools? And whereas we could just try to stay really narrow, like this is what it is and this is what it's not. I don't know. What do you, what do you guys think? I, I, I agree with you. And the other person that uh, I'm reaching out to is Jonathan Halloway, who was uh, an African-American studies professor at, uh, at Yale, then was at uh, Northwestern as provost and is now president of Rutgers. And uh, he should be able to potentially give me some names of some people, even in the Boston area. I guess I, I could be persuaded to collaborate with the schools one way or the other. Hmm. I think the, the cons are, yes, we're opening ourselves up to, you know, what does this mean for Needham and, and sort of going down um, a path that may potentially be um, divisive. But or also- I think, is we're, or doesn't think we're advocating for something, Tina. I'm sorry. Or that they think perhaps we have an agenda and we're advocating for something. And that's, a, that's my concern because we want this to be educational. Right. Um, but I also think at the same time, because it is such a hot topic and um, I don't know, would it be also almost weird to not involve what's happening in the need of what's, what is or what isn't happening in the Needham schools? system and and what they're feeling about it i i don't know i don't have i mean i'm definitely happy to follow back up with them it could it could have just been that it fell like at a weird holiday time or there was some covid mess going on like i'm happy to follow up and just tell them you know we're still looking at this is this do you you know give them another chance to respond yeah because the other i also i don't want to put something out there that could potentially like you were saying either either advocating for or um, speaking out against, or um, I certainly don't want, because we are, you know, HRC, we're part of town government. I also don't want people to think that this is actually happening in the Needham School without somebody from the school being there to communicate, you know, if anything is happening with CRT. So I don't want to necessarily put words in people's mouths without yeah having um, proper representation there to, you know, make sure that we are giving all of the facts. Jen, would you, would you be reaching out to the superintendent? Is that where you would be going to see, you know, if there's been any discussion on the subject within the school systems? Well, I reached out to um, Mary Lamy, who's one of the assistant superintendents. Mm -hmm. Mary worked with us on projects I don't know, in the before time, we used to do a good amount of collaborating with her. Um, I haven't, I haven't reached out directly to Dan in quite a while, I, I think since COVID, because I feel like he must just hate his inbox, but. Um, and I, I think that Mary is the right person. And I was just going to suggest um, maybe adding Joanne Allen Willoughby to the chain also, yeah. um, because she, um, her and Mary are the right contacts. Um, okay. Yeah, and I'm happy to ping them also. Okay. I, I had done some like, you know, Googling about kind of like CRT in the Boston area. And there did look like there was a couple of local programs that I was thinking we might be able to take the, um, you know, dig in and see. It looked like there was a professor at Emerson and maybe at BU that um, were giving talks about it. One of them I think has a class on it. And then there was also this really cool program that is, was run from the, the um, I think it's called YM Boston. And it's like part of the YMCA um, where they, what was the name of the program? Let me see if I can, uh, I can send you guys the links to what I was looking at. It was Yeah, that would be great. Demystifying critical race theory or they did a, um, like a small panel discussion 
um, and one, one of the speakers is this woman, Beth Chandler, who is uh, the president and CEO of YW Boston. She, I've seen her in other events. She's a very impressive speaker, very, very compelling. Um, I'm get, uh, the other thing I was thinking is that all these people probably are going to cost money. So I don't know what we, what we, <laughs> where we go with that um, or how much money. I know that in the past, the town has helped us with some honorariums but I can't remember how much it was. Like, I don't think it was more than a couple hundred dollars. This would be a first for me, but I'm, I'm happy to explore it if you get to a point where that's an issue. Do we have any money to do anything? <laughs> um, no, HRC does not have a budget. Um, <laughs> this is short and long answer. <laughs> Love that. Love that for us. Have, have we have we ever asked for one? I don't think we had any any reason to. Reason to yeah. Well, something to explore for sure. So we could do something like um, have this, you know, have our speaker, and maybe in advance, people could submit questions so that the speaker has time to sort of generate very thoughtful answers because I, it's such a complicated issue or seemingly complicated issue right now for a lot of people. Um, then that's sort of answering some questions, getting people involved, you know, there's some interaction there if people want it, but also clarifying things that, um, you know, people really don't seem to understand about what CRT is or what it, what it isn't. Does that seem like a pretty, would I mean, that be like, do you feel like that would be in a good form for the, for something like this? I feel like it would be, you know, we're not trying to like bite off too much. <laughs> yeah. No, but it also gives the speaker uh, an opportunity to address the questions that people have as part of the presentation. Okay. Uh, so how have you guys done, um, because I've never help, helped to organize an event like this, how have you guys sort of marketed it in the past and how, you know, what works and what doesn't as far as reaching out to people, reaching out to the community, have you guys had pretty decent turnout in the past for things like this? I remember when we had some speakers at, uh, at Town Hall, uh, I think we reached out to the Houses of Worship. We reached out to various organizations in, in town and uh, we had a pretty decent turnout. Yeah, okay. we, held, we held a couple of events at the Senior Center too that had really good turnout. When I say really good turnout, I mean like over 50, probably close to 100, believe it or not. <laughs> in one room together with no masks. Yeah. <laughs> and snacks. I think we That's even good. had wine at one event. <laughs> wow. Um, I'm assuming we would have to do this on Zoom. Is that what you're thinking? I would imagine. Yeah. Just with everything that's been going on with the end Omicron. of the world. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the new variant. So, but I, I mean, I think that it could work. I just wanted to know how you guys um, promoted it. Yeah, yeah, and how how there was what that kind of outreach there was in order to get people um, interested and attending. So I that's mean, probably so interesting. What we do right, Katie. Is that something we could we could put together a Zoom forum for this? Yeah, I could. Um... Yeah, you could figure out the technology side of it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's so funny because I feel like the, our, some of the outreach tools that we were using two years ago are just not tools you would use anymore because everything is, is um, online, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's not, it's not appropriate anymore. I don't um, know. And what do you guys think as far as timing is concerned? I know we're trying to get the policing. I feel like that's probably not gonna happen until what, February or so? 
Well, I don't think we could pull anything together and really do a good job, uh, you know, until the spring. I mean, the holidays are upon us and uh, I think, you know, March, I think would be an appropriate time, which would give us time to prepare, time to find a good speaker, time to do the publicity. Yeah. Yeah, month is, I agree. Month. <laughs> March, April. Um, yeah, I, so I did, um, the, with our, just a little bit of background, but with the policing um, series that we're trying to do, I know they're moving to the new public safety building, ADA Chestnut. They're supposed to move on June 20th, but that could get pushed back any, because of just delays in general. So if we wanted to involve the police at all, which I think that's part of something that we had talked about, right? Um, in that's that programming, that series, they probably wouldn't be able to do anything until early February at the earliest, just because they need to get through that move. Um, so if we sort of targeted March, mid, early to mid-March, I think that that seems like that that timing would be would work out. That would be good. Yeah, we don't have any other anything else really going on, right? Not that I know of. <laughs> we need and we need to obviously check, you know, see if there are any holidays and obviously be conscious of any of those so we don't have a conflict. Okay. Um, okay, so let's try to, um, I'll go through my, I don't really have that many contacts that would be appropriate for this, but I can just kind of ask around and see as well and see if you know who knows who. who. Um, and I know there are a couple of people uh, on the committee that are very anxious for us to uh, bring something to the table at our next meeting. So, if we could maybe um, follow up with our contacts and just see if we can get some leads at the very least. And then we can also at least present and when we meet in a couple of weeks, um, what we think the appropriate form is gonna be. So we talked about having a speaker, it's gonna be on Zoom, submit questions in advance, um, you know, work out the, um, the out outreach and the marketing piece of it, then at least, and you know, the timeline we're hoping for March-ish, um, then I think that's something that we can bring back to the committee when we meet again. Right. In a couple of weeks, does that seem reasonable? Yes, and I, and I will definitely follow back up with the, the school folks before then too, so we can get an idea whether or not they're on board or not. Yeah, do you think, um, I'm just curious, do you think that, I mean, you can't, I don't, you, I don't, I'm not asking you to speculate, but I kind of am. Do you think that it's just such a hot button topic that it's not something that they even want to deal with at this point? I feel like it could be that. I feel like it could be just that they are doing everything they can to just keep the boat afloat right now with all of the COVID junk still happening. Yeah. You know, or it could have just been the holidays came and she missed it. I, I don't know. It could be any of those things, I think. Um, you know, or maybe it's like oh, on her to-do list. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, even just some guidance, because as I said, I, I the last thing I think we want to do is be the, I don't want anybody to perceive us as being the mouthpiece for, right. yeah. The public school, like the need in public schools. And I, I think that that perception, that could definitely be a perception that could um, e easily be developed because we are HRC and we're part of the town government. So, yeah. you know, not even necessarily asking for them to be involved with the actual event, but if there are certain talking points or things that we should include or avoid, right, that would be good information to have. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I was just thinking, I wonder. Um, I mean, let me check with, with Mary first and see if, if she responds, if she doesn't respond, maybe it would be worth trying to reach out to, um, is it Lisa Lee? That's now the, uh, school committee rep on Nuari, I think. 
Um, Liz, Liz, I'm sorry. Yes, Liz Lee. Um, you know, maybe we could try that route too if it if it doesn't um, it doesn't work with Mary. Mary's usually really responsive, so I feel like I feel like she would say one way or the other, like we're not interested or not. It could have just she just could have missed it. Okay. Um, so let me just double check with her um, and see. Okay, that sounds good. So um, we'll follow up with our contacts. We can present our, at least our sort of initial ideas um, at our next meeting. And then Jen, if you don't mind, if you could send us whatever links mm -hmm. you found yep. Yep. to some of the local things, and there might be something that sparks, you know, it might spark another idea of right. you know, how we wanna um, approach this. That would be awesome. I, does anybody know, I have no idea, like what's a reasonable amount that somebody would charge for something like that. I mean, like, I think I was talking to somebody I don't know, in the grocery store or something about getting like Nicole Hannah Jones to come to speak, not for this, but just like in general, how that cool that would be. And it was, I think she charged like $20,000 or something. Oh my like God. That. <laughs> so I was like, all right, so that's not happening. I mean, some, some, of these, some of these people, the big shots have speakers bureaus, but uh, on, on a different subject, I was talking to Dane and uh, Constance about, you know, some of the new programs that they're doing. And I said, one of the things that, uh, you know, uh, we brought up at our last meeting was, you know, we, we really don't have funding. And they said, you know, basically they just take an honorarium, whatever people are able to give. So uh, yeah. it depends upon, you know, obviously yeah. these big time speakers have yeah. representatives and speakers bureaus and, you know, yeah. we're not paying a hundred thousand dollars to have someone come speak. <laughs> yeah. There's gotta be some COVID money available for that, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> No, just to be on the record. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. That's hilarious. Okay, <laughs> anything else, you guys? Oh, I think this was helpful. Okay, so we'll touch base um, when we when all of us have a little bit more information. Sounds good. Okay. Our next meeting is the 16th, right? That's not right. December 16th. I believe so. Okay. Uh, I'll send me the, I'll send um, agenda and Julie just got me the minutes. So I'll send those out probably tonight or tomorrow. Terrific. Thank you guys. Everybody have a good evening. Have a good night. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye.